Brothers and sisters in Christ, peace and grace to every one of you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we like to, I'd like to start with a story. And I don't know if you heard the story about um, this uh, uh, happens in the pearly gates, according to the story. And Peter was sitting sit there taking note of who came and who didn't come. And, and then uh, a lady comes and he said, Name? She said her name. And, and he looked at the book of life and said, Yep, you're here. And she said, I'm so glad I made it. Uh, I'm so glad I'm here in heaven. And Peter said, Not so fast. First, you have to spell a word. And the lady thought for a moment and said, what okay. word? And Peter said, any word that you want. And she said, well, that's easy. Love, L-O-V-E. Okay, come in. So she went in. And Peter said, you know, I, I need to, to see Jesus back there. Can you sit here for a moment? And if anybody comes, you know what to do. Oh, she said, yes. And she was there just for a few minutes as he saw someone coming. As she looked at him, he realized that was her ex-husband. <laughs> and she was very surprised. And she called him and said, says, what happened to you? Well, I had a heart attack and you know what, what happened. Oh, but um, I see that your name is here in the book of life. And, and the guy said, yes, and I'm so glad I made it to heaven. And she said, well, not so fast. You have to spell a word. And the man panicked and said, what word? And she thought for a moment and said, Czechoslovakia. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, in English, Czechoslovakia has a very interesting spelling, doesn't it? <laughs> It's a very difficult word to spell. Anyways, uh, the idea is words. Words, words, words. We all struggle with words and their meanings. Not, uh, sometimes that's not so easy to discern. And so uh, it is even more difficult when we speak Christianese. We may not know it, but we speak Christianese. We speak this specific language that most people understand, but when somebody comes from the outside, from the real world, they may be shocked because they do not understand all the words that we say, and we think we know the meaning of all these words. Even sometimes, as I was explaining to the kids, salvation means to be rescued. And we have so many different ideas about what salvation means. But uh, the idea is, we all need to share a common knowledge of what it is that we talk about. And that happens uh, with every Christian. And I know that most of you speak English. Some of you also speak Spanish. And do you speak Christianese? That's a question. Now, the word for today is glory. And I will ask you, uh, do you know what glory means? Anybody? What, what is glory? And most people go, glory, uh, glory. Yeah, I know, but what does it mean? <laughs> glory. And, and if we look at the text today, Jesus said, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them. So that may be one as we are one. The glory that you have given me. This uh, gospel today is not so so easy to understand because we struggle with this word glory. And even though in another verse, it says, Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory. Of course, we, we associate glory to this grandeur, uh, winning a prize or being in the pedestal. But the problem is that glory has many meanings. One is a great honor, praise, and distinction. Uh, everybody agrees that there's a, a, a renowned a consent that that is a high place. Something that is conferring honor or renown. 
So a highly praiseworthy athlete, you know, it is your crowning glory. Also, it's adoration and praise and thanksgiving, offering worship, something majestic, beautiful in splendor and resplendence. The sun is set in a blaze of glory. The splendor and bliss of heaven, perfect happiness, a height of achievement, enjoyment, or prosperity. You know, uh, what we have, uh, this is called polysemia. There's a word with many meanings. Not all these words uh, are easy to combine and says, well, just we have one word, glory. So the thing is, uh, understanding glory in the language that Jesus spoke. What language did Jesus speak? In what language? Aramaic. Aramaic. Some scholars are sure that he spoke Hebrew or that he was multilingual. That could be, but uh, the disciples were mostly illiterate. And most likely the disciples only spoke Aramaic, a language that is uh, becoming close to extinct right now. Aramaic is uh, spoken in certain areas of Syria. And the Aramaic is also uh, a language that supposedly Jesus uh, told his disciples and his prayers. So if Jesus spoke in that language, we need to, Aramaic, we need to realize that the scriptures reflect that Aramaic, right? No. Uh, this is Aramaic, you know, if you can see it, it looked like Arabic. And this is the language the New Testament is written, and that is Greek. And we have no archaeological evidence Jesus said anytime, anywhere, a word in Greek. Nothing. Uh, for those who come from the Roman Catholic tradition, he never spoke Latin either. <laughs> so, he didn't speak um, Greek, he didn't speak uh, Latin. Uh, most scholars agree that he didn't speak even Hebrew. The, the few words that we have is that he spoke in Aramaic. And so how, how come we have the scriptures here in, in, in English? English was created over a thousand years later. So English did not even exist at the time of Jesus. And if that's the case, we struggle to understand what Jesus said because we had it in Greek, Jesus uh, said it in Aramaic, and we are discussing here in English. Hmm. So all the nuances of the word sometimes get lost. The word glory is in the Bible, in all its instances, the word doxa. Where we get the word doxology? Doxa, doxology. And that is, is an interesting word, uh, because we say, oh, okay, doxa, glory, but the problem is, this other word normally, doxa is supposed to, and that is episteme. Uh, it was in my first uh, class in philosophy that I was taught doxa and episteme. That was, doxa was the first word I learned in Greek. And I thought it was clear, doxa. Because in my philosophy class, doxa means opinion as opposed to episteme, which means knowledge. And the thing is that they oppose because doxa is always subjective, the inside. Episteme is outside objective. And that is a very important distinction, objective versus subjective, because, let's face it, we always think that objective is the truth, and subjective is just what I think. And that opposition that was very important in the school of law, you know, because uh, we always try to get what are the re real thing. And these guys are kind of nine and nine and two guilty. So the understanding of what we say about other people is kind of complicated. And I don't know if you remember Dragnet. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. It means that all the other stuff doesn't matter. Only matters the facts, the truth. Just the facts. 
But we sometimes struggle understanding that the epistemic, the logic, uh, the objectivity comes from our brain, and doxa comes from our heart. So that is the subjective thing. And what we get in understanding, searching through the doxa and the scriptures and the Aramaic is that doxa is God's presence. And it is highly subjective. Something that's subjective is not, that is not true. It's related to you. So you can be there admiring God's presence, God's creation, and somebody may look at the same scene and say, mm -hmm, I need to weed this garden. <laughs> uh, or may say, well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not sure where those plants are there. I did not plant them. They fail to see God's presence or perceive God's creation. Because of that, glory is understood like an increasing God's presence. You see, if you look at the text, glory talks about our relationship as we perceive God. Think of for a moment. You are there in deep prayer relating to God's presence. And a person next to you is looking at the wall, looking at the lake, looking at the phone, trying to find something in the purse. They're totally unaware of God's presence. So, doxa, the glory of God, is highly subjective. It's related to you personally, and you can communicate with God, and there's no facts there. Somebody said, show me God, show me Jesus. And you say, I, I cannot show you. It's in here. I feel God. I feel God's presence. As we continue in the increasing God's presence, we may see God's glory. It could be the splendor. It could be uh, something that is connecting you that can fill your heart. But glory is always something that is in your heart. When you see uh, somebody who made a miraculous recovery from illness, and you say, glory to God, and somebody next to you says, well, the doctors did it. Well, what is it? The doctors got, or maybe both, I don't know. But the person who believes, for the person who believes, God is present. And the presence of God, the glory of God, is something that you can only perceive when you believe. That belief is what connects you to God. That's the glory of God. So the idea is we may see a wonderful sunset. And you may see, isn't it wonderful that we are in God's creation here? I, I have a story about this, this guy that, that was going through a beautiful garden. All the flowers color coordinated. Everything was manicured. Everything was beautiful. And a man that was looking at this garden says, isn't God's creation beautiful? And the garden, the word hard in it says, and yeah. And you should have seen this garden when God had it only for himself. <laughs> For one is the beauty of God, and the other is the hard work of the gardener. So the point is that glory is the divine presence. So when we say glory to God, we put God in a pedestal, but we have the presence of God in our hearts. So this word glory is very important, but you can only understand it if you are connected to God, if God is present. In this uh, quote, if you seek the presence of God, you will see the glory of God. So the, the, uh, the shining, the, the light of God, the presence of God are all part of this word glory that we have in our liturgy all over. But we need to understand that glory means the presence of God. So let me finish saying, keep calm and live in God's presence. Amen. Amen.